Oh, it says Dr. Will is a military veteran turned entrepreneur. As the founder of several successful companies, he has traveled the world to impact, inspire, and influence leaders at all levels. As a professional speaker and business coach, Dr. Will has been named has been named the top speaker in America and named Business Person of the Year by community organizations five times. He is respect. He is a respected global leader and author of over fifty books. Dr. Moreland has worked with organizations, associations, and governments in over 50 countries on five continents. As a founder of Genius Speakers Academy, he supports hundreds of speakers each year to build their brand, business, and bank account. His passions to see individuals excel and succeed in life and business is unmatched. Yes. Welcome, Dr. Will. Yes, yes, yes. Welcome, 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 Dr. Will. Unmute your mic. Welcome to the stage. Thank you, Lanika. I'm super excited about being here at the CEO School. Thank you so much for having me. We're going to have a blast. Yes, we are. I'm super excited. So um, that was his formal introduction, but let me give let me give the Lanika introduction. So um, I met Dr. Will back in I don't even know was it like two I know it was like 11 or 12 years ago like 11 or 12 years ago back in Arizona. Um, he had come from Germany recently, right? Where he was dominating over there. So he's an international speaker. Um, we spent a lot of time just working out, you know, what we could offer our community in terms of business planning and um, ideas and growth and networking. And we went to a lot of networking events. So I got to know him very well. I actually saw, I don't know if you remember the YouTube video we did all those years ago. Um, I found that this morning. I thought that was really funny. Um, he was getting on my nerves. He said amazing about 15 times in the video <laughs> because he's always so positive. Um, he uses words like that um, all the time throughout his conversations. So I'm super excited to have him here. He has built such an amazing business over the years. And we're going to talk about that today. So the topic of the room today is stop asking for a seat at the table and create your own. We are so often begging for a seat at the table. We talk about it all the time. Like, I just need a seat at the table. I just need a seat at the table. No, you don't. Create your own table. And we're going to talk today about how to create your own table. So Dr. Will, let's talk about the three things that you say are most important when it comes to creating your own table. So basically creating your own brand, um, creating um, creating a business that serves you and serves your purposes. So let's talk about the three things that you wanna talk about today. Yeah, so one of the first things I always talk to my clients about is self-awareness, self-awareness. You mentioned that so many times we, we want to pursue somebody else's table because we don't think that we are enough. So when you're going to create your own table, you have to know not only are you bringing something to the table, but you got to know you are the table. You're the table. Hey. You are enough. And yes. so when I moved to when I moved to Phoenix, Arizona, it was 12 years ago. I lived in Germany for 15 years. I didn't know anybody in Arizona. Uh, I had never been to Arizona before. Now, when I got to Arizona, as Lanika said, we would go networking and we would go to all these different events. And I was kind of trying to look for somebody else's table. But here's the thing that I really found out was no one's interested in giving you a seat at the table. And this is not negative. This is, this is not negative. I just want you to mentally think about this. Like right now, we're, we're on this CEO school. If someone came and knocked on your door right now and said, hey, I have this vacuum cleaner that I'd like to sell you. Well, you're not looking to buy a vacuum cleaner right now. You're not prepared to buy a vacuum cleaner right now. You probably don't even want one. It may be the best vacuum cleaner in the world, but because you're not looking for it, you're going to reject it. So many of you are gifted. You're talented. You're super, here's the word, Anika, amazing. Yes. But nobody knows you, right? Nobody right. knows you. So you shouldn't expect somebody just to greet you with open arms and say, oh, I believe that you're this amazing person. Come on in, give me your skills, give me your awesomeness and let's do business. So once I realized that it wasn't against me, it wasn't that they didn't like Will, they didn't know Will. 
And once I realized that, I was amazing. I, I knew that I had the stuff. It, my bank account wasn't reflecting my brilliance. And so I was getting frustrated because I was expecting other people to feed me. Let me say that again. Mm -hmm. I was expecting other people to feed me. So when I realized that I could go to the grocery store, that I could buy my groceries, that I had my own kitchen, that I could put my own meal together, then that's when things really started to take off for me. And let me tell everybody that's listening to me right now, we're living in such an amazing space right now that you can create. It's far easier, and, and I'm sure Lanika will attest to this, Today, it's far easier to create your table than it was 12 years ago. Yes. We didn't have Instagram. We didn't have um, Facebook as we know it today. We didn't know Facebook was a business instrument. We didn't uh, know YouTube was a business instrument, that LinkedIn was a business instrument like this. We were doing things like Blab and uh, what was that, Blog Talk Radio. You know, you I managed my whole life and my whole businesses on my phone. Right. This was unheard of you know, 10, 15 years ago. So that's the first thing, self-awareness. You got to know that you are enough. And if you just start building your own table versus pursuing someone else's table, you'll get there a whole lot faster. Amen. That's true. Um, I was, when I was listening to the video that we did 12 years ago, I had to laugh because one of the things in the video that I said was, we have this amazing new thing called social media. <laughs> And it's hilarious now to think back to when, you know, when that was, that was right around the time that Barack Obama had gotten elected. And I remember I had just put up my first Facebook post. My first Facebook post was that, yes, we did, you know, from yes, we can. Yes, we did. That was my first Facebook post. And uh, it was, it was just funny to watch that back and know that like, that's how far we've come in 12 years that we had just gotten on Facebook. Um, so self-awareness. So if you guys have your pens and papers, you know, when you come to CEO school, you're supposed to have pen and paper. If you don't have pen and paper, this must be your first CEO school. It must be. All right. So the first thing is self-awareness. All right. The second thing that we're, that we're going to talk about today, um, you mentioned it earlier was consistency. So tell us why consistency is so important. So we've all heard this before. People like to do business with people they know, like, and trust. But how do you get to that know, like, and trust? How do you get to those three phases? You just talked about it, Lanika, back in 2008, 2009, when we started using social media. I said, every single day, I'm going to come on Facebook and I'm going to post something positive. Monday through Friday, I'm going to post something positive positive. This is how I'm going to use this instrument um, to get my message out. And so since 2009, all the way up until 2022, if you come to my page, you come to any of my social media, you can be assured that you're going to get something positive. Now, what did this do? See, in the beginning, people didn't know who Dr. Will was. They just knew. I remember early on in Arizona, people would come up to me and say, I don't know who you are, but I know you're always posting that positive stuff. You're always posting. You're the positive guy. I would go to these uh, networking events. Oh, you're the guy that's always smiling. You're the, all, you're the guy that's always positive. I don't know who you are, but I know you're the positive guy. Well, what does this do? When someone else is having a bad day or somebody else needs to be encouraged, they can refer them to me. They can say, listen, I know this guy on Facebook book. He's always positive. Go on his page, read a couple of his posts. He's always going to give you something to think about. So when you're building your business, consistency is going to build confidence. People are going to now have confidence in you because now they can depend on you. Think about this for a moment. You can have the best restaurant. You can have the best food. But if their opening hours are sketchy, like one day they open at 10 and the next day they open at 12, well, how can you refer somebody to them? Because you don't even know if they're going to be open or not. Yes, they have great food, but if they're inconsistent in how they're showing up, how can you build that confidence? You know, you hear people say things like, this is my show. 
This is my show. It comes on every Tuesday at 8 p.m. I'm leave me alone. Don't call me. Don't talk to me. Why? Because that show is consistently coming on at 8 p.m. on Tuesdays. So whatever you do, people always ask me, how much should I be on social media? That's not the question. The question is, how committed are you? How committed can you be? Can you be committed to one post a week? Then do that. Can you be committed to showing up three times a week? Then do that. For Lanika, she says, you know what? I'm going to give it to you on Friday. That's our day. That's the day we're going to come. So now all of you can now put your schedule around this meeting. You know, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, that's when I get my CEO school in. So what are you now doing? You're carving out time. You're making a way in your life to be here for CEO space. That's how people will do in your business if you're consistent. They will make a way to work with you because they know, like, and trust you. This is why I love social media because you can show up. You know, you see me now, right? You see me. The more you begin to see me, I become a real person to you. Oh, I see him in his office. Oh, what's that picture back there? Oh, I wonder what he's written on his whiteboard. Oh, what, what is that over there? I, I'm reading that. You're now a part of my world. And the more I show up in this zone, the more I show up on this platform, you get to know me. You get to now decide, do you like me? Do, do you like sexy, bald-headed men? Either you won't make a determination, I do or I don't. If you don't, then you're going to go somewhere else. But if you do love sexy, bald-headed men, you're tuning in to the Dr. Will show. But that's all based on consistency. See, if I show up once a month, and then I'm down and I'm, oh, nobody came and watched me. I am not know why I'm doing this. And then I show up a month later because I had a pep talk with Lanika and she pumped me up and she says, Will, where you been? I haven't seen you on Facebook. I haven't seen you on YouTube. I haven't seen you on Instagram. Oh, I was just down and I wasn't feeling like I was my best self. Well, who's going to be confident in you? So your consistency is going to breed confidence from your clients and your potential clients. Yes, consistency is so important. Um, I'm going to give you guys... Um, since this is CEO school, I'm going to give you guys a real CEO lesson. So when I started Trash Logic um, back in 2016, remember a couple weeks ago, I told you guys don't hire your friends. Um, I hired a friend to uh, be my front desk receptionist. And um, I didn't have any money at the time, so I needed somebody who would work for free, basically. She wasn't working for free. She was working on deferment. So I ended up paying her 30 days after she started. So, you know, don't think she actually worked for free. So I brought her in and um, she was making a lot of mistakes, right? Um, one of the main mistakes that she made was uh, she forgot to send out the invoices one month. And I'm wondering why the money's not coming in the way it was supposed to. And I'm, you know, I'm looking like maybe the mail is, is stuck. I'm going to the mail, you know, to the post office asking, you know, is something going on? Because nobody, you know, I'm not getting my mail. Um, so then I start calling the clients and they're saying, well, we never got our invoices. So I ask her, hey, uh, these clients are saying they never got their invoices. And so they didn't pay. And she said, Oh, well, I couldn't figure out the invoices. We went from, because we had just started and we grew really fast. She said, we went from like five invoices to 30 overnight and I couldn't figure out how to get them all out. So I just figured they knew how much they owed and they would just pay. Okay, so <laughs> where in what world does that work? Okay, so speaking of consistency, a client is expecting you to deliver every single month those invoices to them, right? If you don't do that, not only does it disrupt the flow of your business, but it also makes you look unprofessional and uncommitted to what you're doing. So consistency is very, very important in your business. So make sure that, you know, when you, we talked about SOPs weeks ago, right? Your standard operating procedures. The reason that you write, you write those is so that you can stay consistent in your business. It's so that you don't have a day that you, you just drop off because you forgot or because somebody didn't feel like it, right? Or somebody got confused and couldn't figure it out. 
you have all of those systems in place for a reason. So number one, um, according to Dr. Will, is self-awareness. We talked about that. We talked about consistency. And number three, we talked about this at length. So I, I want to let you go into number three. I'm going to let you announce number three because I think this is the most important uh, point that you're going to make today. So the most important point that you're going to make today is Preparation, guys, preparation. You always have to be preparing for the opportunity because you have to believe that the opportunity is going to come. You believe that you have a great idea. You believe that you have a great business. Then you also have to believe that the opportunity is going to come. And Lanika just talked about a part of that preparation is getting the SOPs. A lot of, a lot of times when you're starting your business, you're, you're going to have um, a lot of per se downtime in, in terms of from client to client, customer to customer. So what are you doing in that in-between time? You know, what are you doing for me as a speaker be, from keynote to keynote? What am I doing in that two for, in that two zone? What should I be doing in that two zone from one keynote to the next keynote? What do I do with that time? Whether it's a week in between, a month in between, I'm preparing. I'm preparing my business. And when I talk to my clients, we, we talk about the transitions that you go through. You know, um, I call it the three E's. So you have employee, you have entrepreneur, and then you have executive. What we're talking about this morning, chief executive officer. So from employee, when most people, when they become an entrepreneur, they're still thinking like an employee. They're still thinking like an employee. So you have to now go through a transition of preparation where you go now from being an employee, where you're thinking about time versus dollars. Um, they pay me, they don't pay me for this. Well, you know, as an entrepreneur, you're going to do a lot of stuff that you don't get paid for, right? And if you still have the same mindset, well, they don't pay me for this. Well, when you come into entrepreneurship, small business ownership, you're wearing all these hats, but then you have to transition. You have to transition into what I call executive, where now yeah. you're the chief uh, uh, executive operator, where you're not officer, where you're not doing all the day-to-day -day tasks. Now you're focusing on mission. Now you're focusing on um, your vision. Now you're focusing on, are we going to sell this company? Or are we going to scale it? Are we going to create a franchise model? So now we can duplicate this uh, in other cities and other states. But that preparation phase is so important. Uh, just the other day, I was talking to a group just like this. Not only do you, your business has to grow, but you as well have to be growing with your business, right? So in phase number one of your business, you need to be Hold working. Hold on, Dr. Will. Hold on one second. Yes, so I, we're going to talk about all of that. So uh, put a pin in it. Uh, we are going to start right where you are, but I want to address the, the uh, fan base audience. Thank you guys so much for coming. All right. So I'm super excited to get back into this because this was getting good. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off like right when it was getting good. But I was like, if I don't now, then we're never going to get out of here. So yeah, yeah, yeah. This is good. You guys um, enjoying this conversation? Yes. Awesome. All righty. So let's get back in. Um, you were you were just getting into um, your your advice about preparing. So I'm bringing it back to Dr. Will. Come on back. Yeah, so you you mentioned it, right? Getting us out of this frame of hustling. And so I love CEO school because very few entrepreneurs get to that get to that level. As I said, you have employee, you have entrepreneur, and you have the executive level, what we're talking about right now. And in that executive level, you know, I always say systems beat people all the time. I'm a military person. So when Lanika brought up SOP, standard operating procedures, that's the lifeline. That's the bloodline. That's where you're really going to get freedom in your business. And so even in preparation phase, it sounds mundane, but to actually go through your day-to-day -day operations and literally write down everything you do, everything you do. Like I have binders back here. Someone, if I, if I had to walk away from my business for a month, for two months, for six months, people could come into my office, pick up my binders and still run my business. They're gonna know all the accounts receivables. They're gonna know all the P&L. They're gonna know all the banking information because I have all these SOPs set up 
so they can run the business in my absence. That's where true freedom is going to come. As long as you stay in the entrepreneur zone, you're always going to be hustling because everything as an entrepreneur, everything is up here. Everything is up here. You know where your billing is. You know where your clients are, your customers are, but you haven't taken the time out to put it to paper. You know, there's a proverb that says, write the vision down and make it plain so they that read it may run. Not you, not you. You're not running anymore. You're not hustling anymore. You're not running around like a chicken with their head cut off. Now you have your team. Now you have your employees. Now you've learned how to delegate in this phase. You've learned how to delegate. You've learned how to um, automate what needs to be automated. So in this preparation phase, it's so key for you now creating your own table, for you now creating a business that you love. So many entrepreneurs end up creating a business that they hate because it feels like a prison. I cringe every time I talk to people and they say things like, I, ha I haven't been on vacation in years. Like it's a badge of honor. Like I haven't taken a day off in years. Like it's a badge of honor or something because we've been framework, what, what? To work ourselves to death. We've been framework to work that there's an honor in working hard. I'm not saying that you're not going to work hard. I know it's out there where they say, you know, find something that you love and you'll never work another day in your life. Well, that's not true. What happens is when you find what you love, you work even harder because you love it. I'm not trying to get away from what I do. I love what I do, but I've systemized what I've done so I can enjoy my life because that's why we said we got into this, right? I'm always telling my clients, we're going to figure out what type of life you want and then we're gonna build a business that supports that lifestyle. And this happens all in the preparation phase. So preparation is key, guys. You gotta, as you're, as you're thinking about growth, as you're wishing about growth, as you're wanting growth, you have to be preparing yourself. I talked to a group about this yesterday or the day before, that internal work. Lanika will talk to you about that. When, you, when there's no money in there, how are you preparing your mindset to stay consistent? You, you have to be consistent no matter what. Whether you have a dollar in the bank or whether you have a million dollars in the bank, you got to be consistent. If you're, if you're up and down topsy-turvy in your business, then how are people going to be confident in you? How's your business going to grow if the only time, I, Lanika will probably witness to this, testify to this, you're not going to always feel 100. You're not going to always feel rosy-dosy. But your actions, right, your actions, that's where those systems come in. McDonald's doesn't have the best product. They have the best system. Yes. They have the best system. This is why they can take a million-dollar uh, shop and turn it over to a 21-year-old with a bunch of 16-year-olds because they're not confident in the 16-year-olds or the 21-year-old. They're confident in the system. See, that boss can look at the numbers. That boss can look at the computer and know the system is off. Wait a minute, we're using too many buns. He doesn't even have to, he doesn't even have to ask the young lady that's the manager or the young man, hey, hey, what's going on? The system lets me know, hey, this bun count is off. How we got a hundred patties, but we only got 50 buns. That don't work. That don't work because the system lets them know. And so in preparation phase, in preparation phase, this is where you learn all of this. This is why it's so important for you to connect with a CEO school, for you to connect um, with a person like Lanika, because, you know, people tell me this, well, I can just learn that on Google. Well, let me tell you this little secret about Google. <laughs> Google only answers the question that you ask. Let me let that settle in your Mary, heart. Yes. <laughs> Google only answers the question that you ask. There's a thousand questions you don't even know to ask. And so when you're talking with Lanika, Lanika's going to say, well, have you thought about, see, Google's never going to ask you, well, have you thought about this? See, if I, ask, if I ask Google, Google, how do I start a business? Google's going to tell me, it's going to take me to WikiHow. And WikiHow's going to say, go down to your local office, get a business license, get an LLC. But Lanika's going to tell you, okay, let's talk about clarity. Let, let's, let's talk about your taxation. Are you an LLC? 
getting taxed as an S Corp? Are you an LLC getting uh, taxed as a sole proprietor? Google's not going to ask you that. It's not going to ask you that question back. And so you can go to Google University if you want to and trust your business to Google University if you want to. But this is why nine out of 10 businesses fail and go out of business, not because the person wasn't passionate, not because they didn't have a good idea, it's because preparation phase, that internal uh, preparation of you becoming a CEO, you getting to that executive level. So let me stop if you want to ch chime in here, Lanika. No, like you are so, you are so on point because we often say Google University, YouTube University, which is great. Trust me. I go to YouTube University. Um, Natasha was uh, asking me the other day about audio books. And I was telling her that every day, all day long, I either have an audio book going in the background or I have a YouTube video from Stanford University or from Wharton going at all times. Right. So, yes, everybody mute your mics if you're not speaking, please. Um, but I always have something going on in the background so that I can learn. But I also have people that I can reach out to. So um, most of you guys have heard the story that I went to UCLA after I started my business so I could really learn how to be a CEO. Well, what that introduced me to were people who were doing business on a level I had never seen before. These people were doing, doing $100 million a month with the government. And I had never, ever heard or known anyone personally. So now those people are in my network. Now I can literally call a Cameron and say, hey, Cameron, I'm having this issue in my business and I'm not quite sure how to deal with it. And just like Dr. Will said, instead of him just giving me the answer, he'll start asking me questions so that he can give me something appropriate for my business and actually guide me in the right direction. So it's really important to align yourself with people who have done what you're trying to do. Um, and then when you were speaking about preparation, what I kept thinking about is T.D. Jakes often says that your gift will make room for you, right? Your gift will make room for you. But a lot of times your gift makes room for, for you in spaces that you haven't prepared for. So you may get into a room where, yes, they need what you have, but you are not prepared to present it, right? You're not, present, you're not prepared to show them why you're the person for that job. I always use um, the example of, I always use the example of uh, this, I think he was, yes, he was Jamie Foxx's, um, he was Jamie Foxx's fitness guy or his, um, his trainer. He's the guy who got Jamie Foxx ready for Ali. He was on Oprah, not, J not Ali, what's the other movie Jamie Foxx did where he had to get real buff? Not Will Smith, Jamie Foxx. He got, had to get really buff. But anyway, Jamie Foxx took him on Oprah. Oprah said, all right, so where do we find, where do we find your book? Where do we find your, you know, your fitness plan? Is it online? How do we find it? And the guy was like, I mean, um, you know, like I got, I mean, I got a, I got a website. Uh, I don't, he was so not prepared for that question. He was on Oprah. This is when Oprah was at the top. And I said, oh my God, I never want to have an Oprah moment like that. I never want to walk into a room and somebody says, okay, I want what you have. How do I find it? And I have no way to give it to them because I haven't prepared. So you can tap back in, Dr. Will. No, that's so, you know, that reminds me of a story that taught me about preparation. I remember I was, I reached out to this gentleman his name was Dr. Peter James, well, his name is Dr. Peter James Daniel. And he was coming over to, he was coming over to uh, Germany to do a series of business conferences. And I was so impressed and so enamored with him. I reached out, he's from Australia. I reached out to him and um, I reached out to him. His assistant told me, she says, Dr. Daniels got your message. He's going to call you when he gets back in town. So she told me this, and in my mind, I said, Dr. Daniels is not going to call me. He's not going to call me. And sure enough, I'll never forget, a week later, I'm laying on my couch. My phone rings. I answer the phone. He says, this is Dr. Daniels. Is this Will Moreland? 
And I remember muting the phone. We didn't have cell phones. I remember muting the phone and jumping around in my living room, going crazy, talk, telling my wife, this is Dr. Daniels, this is Dr. Daniels. I get back on the phone, this is Will Moreland. <laughs> and he asked me, he asked me three questions. He asked me three questions that I was not prepared for. And he says, the last one, he was like, well, how, how can I assist you? And I said, well, when you come to Germany, I would love to be able to take you out to lunch and just talk with you. He says, well, I'm sorry, my schedule is booked. I knew in that moment, I missed it. I knew it, I heard it yeah. in his voice. He knew yeah. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't, he yeah. said, I'm not gonna waste my time with you. I wasn't prepared. So right. he did come to Germany and I ended up having to follow this gentleman to every presentation he did. I'm talking about driving two hours to one wow. location, an hour and a half the next day to another location. About the fourth presentation, we're in Germany, so I'm the only black guy in these presentations. <laughs> about the fourth presentation, he recognizes me and he says, you've been coming to my presentations. You've been to the last three. I said, Dr. Daniels, I'm Will Moreland. I just had a conversation with you about two weeks ago. He's like, oh, I remember you. And eventually we did have a conversation and he became one of my mentors. But I'll never forget, literally, I had wrote that down. I used to carry it around in my wallet to remind me to be ready for the moment. So many times, how many, how many stories have we heard about lottery winners? Winning the lottery. How long you been playing the lottery? I've been playing for years. I've been playing for years. They finally win. And then three years later, they're broke again. What happened? They didn't prepare to win. They wanted to win, but they didn't prepare to win. How many of you as business owners want to win, but you're not prepared to win? If, if I said right now, I wanted to invest in your business right now, do you have the banking do you, do you have the acumen? If I ask you for your PL statement right now, if I said, how am I going to get my investment money back? Are you ready? You may want to go to the next level, but are you ready? That's why it's so important for you to be in groups like the CEO school, to connect with trained CEOs like Lanika that know what they're talking about. See, the, the internet is a gift and a curse. Just because someone's talking doesn't mean that they know what they're talking about. Just because someone has a YouTube page doesn't mean they've been tested in the fire. Just because someone has an Instagram page, people, pe people are renting cars all the time. You can rent a car all the time. You can rent a house all the time. You can air and beat you know, your way to success all the time. But you want to get with somebody that's tried and true, somebody that's really in the trenches, somebody that's literally running and operating a business. I tell people all the time, just because you have a website doesn't mean you have a business. Anybody yes. can pay $30 for a website. Right. That doesn't mean you have a business. And so I get so excited to be a part of groups like this. When Lanika called me up and, and asked me to be a part, I get so excited because you guys are doing the real work. This is what I call the unsexiness of building a business. <laughs> Friday at lunchtime on a Zoom call, right? This is the unsexiness of building a business. This is not what they show you. No one's going to Instagram this out. No one's going to tweet this out because this is not sexy. Learning is not sexy, right? If we all, if we went on our Instagram right now and posted um, us in front of a Lamborghini or in front of a Porsche, we get a thousand likes. If you post a screenshot, I'm up in here getting my learn on. Ain't nobody going to say nothing. And that's a part of the mental work, understanding. Like you don't yeah. get no praise for doing this, but here's the principle. What's done in the dark will be revealed in the light. No one saw what Lanika was doing for months, for years. And then all of a sudden, Lanika got a trash company? Wait a minute. She got one of the fastest growing trash companies, but y'all didn't see the work in the dark. She didn't say anything. And then boom, cause she had did the work. And that's what you guys wanna do. Trust the process. What's done in the dark will be revealed in the light. Amen. Amen. Um, it, it's so interesting because I always tell people, are you an entrepreneur or are you an Instagram entrepreneur? Right? Because a real entrepreneur doesn't have time to sit on social media all day. You don't have time to be on fan base in 15 rooms all day if you're actually building a business, right? 
You go on fan base, you interact with people, you get off fan base. You go on Instagram, you post a couple of things, you like a couple of people because engagement is important, right? You go do that, you get off and you go do your business, right? You don't spend all day on the internet, but you will see people hashtagging, hashtagging, living the life, you know, <laughs> bossing up, about all these things and they haven't done anything. They haven't even built their foundation. They went to FedEx and they printed out some business cards and they threw up some website on Squarespace and they said they were in business, but they really haven't built anything as far as a foundation. So if you really want to build a company, I'm not talking about, you know, doing something from your living room. I mean, we're, we're post COVID. So a lot of us are working from home. I'm working from home, but guess what? My whole operation isn't right here in my living room, right? There's, there's things happening out there in the world outside of my living room as well. You know, yes, I can run my business from right here, but I have all kinds of things going on outside of here. If I never leave here, my name is still out there in the world, right? There's still business getting done out there in the world. So yes, LaShawn, trust the system, trust the process, be prepared, yes. And, you know, the reason that I wanted Dr. Will to come on here is because I, I saw his growth and I saw his trajectory. And, you know, anybody can say that, yeah, I'm a hustler, I work, but really have, who have you seen that actually puts in the work? Who actually puts in the work day in, day out and doesn't give up? The fact that Dr. Will is still Dr. Will 12 years later and Dr. Will did not disappear off of my radar tells you that Dr. Will put in the work. Because when I met him, I told you he had just gotten here. He had just gotten to the States. So he put in the work. And not only did he, is he still here, but he actually has a real business. So you want to tell them a little bit about like what you actually built um, over, you know, the past 12 years and um, how has your business changed over that time? You know, I know COVID changed a lot of things, but how has your business changed from 12 years ago to now? And if you could talk to us a little bit about that growth. Yeah, so um, when I was in when I was in Germany, uh, I did two things. I had a consultant company, and I was a pastor as well. And uh, I made the decision to sell my company, my consultant company, and step down from pastoring and move to uh, Phoenix, Arizona. I just felt that um, there was something different that I should be doing with my life. And so when I got to when I got to Arizona, the initial plan was to. Uh, restart my consultant company. And, you know, we, we put our PowerPoint together. We, we put all our spreadsheets together and we think it's going to happen exactly how we put it on that PowerPoint. And so I just knew, you know, I'm Dr. Will. I've been doing this for 10, 12 years already. Um, I'm just going to hop into Arizona and they're just going to fall in love with this sexy bald head man. And the money's just going to, you know, just fall off and go into my checking account, right? Well, that's not, that's not how it happened. Uh, once again, I realized it wasn't that people did not like me. It wasn't that I wasn't good. People just didn't know me. I was in a brand new territory. Um, marketing in Germany, marketing in Europe was totally different than marketing in the United States. What people put credence on in Europe, um, they didn't care about in the United States. And how you market in the United States is totally different than how you market in uh, Europe. So I had to figure that all out. And once again, Lanika was one of the first individuals that I met when I moved to um, Arizona that was very instrumental in teaching me, hey, this is how you do it. Um, uh, in the United States, us being on YouTube. She says, Will, you gotta get you gotta get on YouTube, you gotta do videos. This is how you market in the United States. I don't need to do YouTube and all that kind of stuff. I'm Dr. Will, I'll be good. And so I had to learn how to be teachable. I had to learn how to be planable, right? I had to learn how to be flexible. I had to learn how to pivot. And so I'm I'm trying to get my consultant company off the ground. And um, I'm complaining to a buddy of mine and saying, man, this is, you know, my wife at the time, she's pregnant with our son. Um, she's looking at me side eyed, like, okay, you didn't move me from the comfort of my home. We didn't sold everything. We didn't gave up everything. And here we are uh, in Germany, uh, in Phoenix, cause you're talking about chasing this dream that you got, um, is turning into a nightmare. And so I'm talking to my boy, I'm complaining to him and he says, 
man, you as a pastor, you've already been speaking, man. You, you need to start speaking. Now, I didn't know anything about the speaking industry per se. I knew Les Brown, Zig Ziglar, uh, Jim Roman. I listened to them for years, but I didn't know that there was a speaking industry. I didn't know there was an industry. I just thought they got tapped with a magic wand and they were able to go across the country and speak. I didn't know, just like you say you want to be a lawyer, just like you say you want to be a doctor, an engineer, you could say, I want to be a public speaker. And so at this lunch, he pulls out this check for $3,500. And he says, this is what I got paid for speaking one hour. He now had my attention. I said, $3,500 for speaking one hour? I was used to getting a pat on your back and getting a, a gift card saying, thank you for coming to our MLK and speaking about success, right? I didn't know you could literally build a business around speaking. So he says, hey, there's a conference next week in California come to this conference so you can so you can learn about the speaking industry. I go down to this conference. Now I'm intimidated because there's 1,500 speakers in the room. I'm like, oh, man, you didn't got me caught up, man. It's 1,500 speakers in here. And then what, what do we say? Being assured of yourself. Everybody I talk to, man, what do you talk about? Leadership development? Man, what do you talk to? Personal development? I'm like, everybody talk about what I talk about. Where's my voice going to fit? Where am I going to have space in this world? But the guy that was doing the training, he talked so well that he convinced me that there was an opportunity. So I come back home. I tell my wife, Eureka, we found it. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a speaker. I started a, a, a speaking business. Once again, fell flat on my face again because I didn't know the speaking business. I knew speaking where most entrepreneurs are. You know what you do. I know how to bake a pie. I know how to braid hair. I know what I'm passionate about. But passion is not a business strategy. And so even though I was passionate about speaking, I had my topic, I didn't know the business. So I took six months, six months to literally learn the business. I studied the best of the best. I ended up uh, uh, joining a Lisa Nichols training, a Les Brown training. I wanted to learn from the top. I wanted to know why they were getting $25,000 an hour to speak and I was getting a gift card. And once I figured that out, after studying for six months, I figured out this framework that I call my PAM system. And it's just simply uh, positioning your advantage, your competitive advantage and marketing, P-A-M, positioning, advantage and marketing. When I figured my PAM formula out, that's when my business took off. I position myself in the market as the go-to person for personal development. I knew my advantage. I was in the military. I came from Compton. I lived in Europe for 15 years. I had all these things that made me unique, that made me different than the other speakers. So I tapped into my uniqueness. Once I tapped into my uniqueness, then I started marketing that uniqueness. I started marketing that result. So how could Dr. Will help you? If you hired Dr. Will to come in and speak what was the result you were gonna get? And this is so important. A lot of times people promote and they market their accolades, but they don't uh, market the result that they can produce. People don't care about your accolades. They don't care about your widget. They care about how is this going to change my life? So when you're marketing, you gotta tell people how your system, how your product is gonna change their life. When Lanika is marketing about her trash company, she's not telling you how great she is. She's not telling you that I went to UCLA Business School. She's telling you, hey, if you have this problem, you have uh, overage of trash, if you have stains on your floor, this product can help you. If you want your area to look more, you know, whatever, this product is going to fix that uh, 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 situation. So when you're marketing, you want to market the result that the individual is going to get. They don't care about saving time. They don't care about how good you can cook your pie. What is the result you're going to provide? And so when that happened, uh, things started taking off in my business. I then began to use marketing uh, I, I then began to use speaking to market my consultant company. So um, people would bring me in to speak, but then I could now offer them my consulting services. And so we got in through speaking, then we built the consultant company. And then from there, um, I built a speakers academy where I now train other speakers to go out there and dominate, build their brand, build their business and build their bank account. And so that's it in a short synopsis. That's awesome. 
That is so awesome. Um, and I've seen it, you guys. I don't bring you guys anybody that is fluff, right? Anybody I bring to CEO school, they're people that I've seen actually build a business. They're not people that are just out here on Instagram and Facebook just hustling the people. We, these are people with real systems and they actually know what they're talking about. So I want you to tap in. Um, Carla, can you put up Dr. Will's Speakers Academy um, link in there? So if you are interested in becoming a speaker, I do want you to reach out to Dr. Will um, because he really is the best, um, the best in the business and um, he's done it, you know, and we talked about that, like making sure that you that you get with people who have done what what you're trying to do. So I'm going to open up the floor to questions. Um, does anybody want to talk to Dr. Will? Um, just say hi, give any feedback. Um, go ahead and unmute your mic and we will um, start just kind of the open communication phase of CEO school. I don't know if everybody's mic is. I see Burnett is trying. She trying. <laughs> She's trying. Um, I don't know if you guys um, can't unmute, but I wanted to um, talk a little bit about getting help. So I was just, um, I was talking to someone yesterday about um, finding other ways to outsource, right? We talk about outsourcing a lot in our businesses, but getting stuff off of our plate so that we can focus on what our core business is and what we want, you know, what we need to be doing as opposed to all these little things that we should be able to delegate to someone else. And it's hard when it's just you, right? And you're just a, um, you're a solopreneur. So what kinds of things, uh, Dr. Will, have you outsourced or do you recommend outsourcing in your business? So the question you have to ask yourself, especially as, as you just said, Lenika, as a solo entrepreneur, you have to continuously remind yourself that um, if I, I think about it like this. So I'm an employee of my company. So I ask myself, Will, what is what does Moreland Training pay you to do? What is, if, if we could hone it down, if you had a description of your job title, what is it that they pay you to do? So for my company, they paid me to create content, they paid me to network, and they paid me to generate revenue. That's what I get paid for. Those three things right there is what I get paid for. Anything outside of that, I should not be doing. So initially, you know, in the beginning, you're doing all of these things, but I just talked about this a couple of weeks ago. You need to learn how to fire yourself. So you should have a list of things that you're doing that as soon as you're able to fire yourself, you should fire yourself. And three ways to fire yourself. Either you fire yourself through um, automation, either you fire yourself through delegation, or you fire yourself through leveraging. So automation, uh, delegation, or leveraging. So for me, I'm always asking myself, Will, what do you need to fire yourself? If I find myself doing something that's out of those three things, creating content, networking, and generating revenue, then I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And so for me, Lanika, I, you know, uh, I have a team now, and then we, we use those three things, whether it's hiring a team, whether it's automating, whether it's outsourcing, whether it's, um, uh, getting other consultants in our consulting company will get contracts uh, for things that I don't specifically talk about, but then I'll contract another uh, speaker or trainer to go out and do that training for us. So pretty much everything. I'm not trying to do um, anything pretty much except those three things. And so I delegate, automate, and leverage everything. Um, I just talked about this. One of the things, especially most of your listeners are probably um, from the United States. Our educational system, they teach us how to work alone. You know, they say, don't cheat, work on your own work, don't copy on your neighbor. But in business and in real life, that's how you go forward. It's, it's not cheating, it's called collaboration. It's not cheating, it's called partnership. And so when you understand partnership and collaboration, 
that's when your business really starts to scale. When you look at companies like Amazon and Google and Facebook, they're not trying to reinvent the wheel. What do you see them do? They'll go and buy a whole company. If you've already uh, done something and you've already figured it out, Google doesn't try to refigure it out. They just buy you right. and bring you to their umbrella. And that's even as small businesses, that's what we have to, we struggle so much because we have that mindset of, I got to do it by myself. I got to do it by myself. No, don't reinvent the wheel. You know, I'm so, when you talk about help, like when I walk into the store, I don't try to look for nothing. I go straight to the help counter and say, excuse me, what hour is this on? Some of y'all, y'all just walk in the store and walk around for hours and hours and hours and just be walking around lost aimlessly. <laughs> I'd never do that. I go right into the store. Excuse me, sir, where is this? What hour is this on? I don't have time to be looking up the aisle and looking at, <laughs> oh, where is this? I don't have time for that. And so I'm always asking, and, and this is something you got to learn because just inherit, we feel like asking for help or asking a question. I don't want them to think I'm jocking them. I don't want them to think I'm trying to copy off of them. I will ask somebody in a minute, hey man, I saw you do something in your video. Something came across the screen. How did you do that? What program is that? I'll go up to a guy. Hey man, I like that shirt, man. Where'd you get, I, I don't have any of that. Because life is too short to be worrying about what people are thinking about you. So for me, I ask questions all the time, all the time. When somebody is, is doing something, for me, I get so excited because it just shows me, like, Lenika, this, this process that she's doing right now is so amazing. Oh, fan base, okay, put them on fan base and then chop them off to get them into the Zoom. That reminds me of the drug game when I was back in the drug game. Like, we're just going to give you a little sample. We're going to give you a little sample. We're going to get you high just a little bit, but you're coming back for more. I'm like, this is genius. This is brilliant. That's a system. That's a formula. That is a marketing strategy. Now there's people outside wondering, like, I wonder what they're talking about. But I'm not going to miss next week. Um, let, me, let me go on and pay this $20 and stop playing, right? That's all a strategy. Y'all think she's just haphazardly doing something, but that I recognize systems and strategies. So I'm like, okay, Lenika, how'd you do that? I'm going to ask her after this. Okay, why'd you choose Spanbase over this other platform? Okay, why'd you use Zoom and, instead of Microsoft? And so always ask questions, guys. That's how you accelerate your success. Yes. Oh my God, this is so good. Y'all, I just, I don't know if y'all understand like, how dope this is that you guys get this information. Like this is not stuff that's readily available. You usually have to go somewhere. You usually have to buy a ticket, go to a conference to get this kind of content. Like, do you guys understand what you're getting right now? Like this is so dope. And I just thank you so much, Dr. Will. Thank you so much for coming to CEO School because you know, I get just as excited as everybody else that comes in here. Like I'm a student too. I just, I love it. I'm a, you know, I'm a lifelong learner. I always am, I'm always looking for another opportunity and something that I missed, another nugget, something that I can add on. And so I just really, really appreciate you being here. You guys, every week I ask you like, what were your takeaways? So I wanna know what your takeaways are. If you can't talk, you can put them in the chat box. But I do want to know what your takeaways are, because that is how I continue to build content on here. I mean, it's so amazing. Do you guys understand, like, the caliber of the talent that is here? Like, Dr. Will charges, how much did you say you charge for a speech? $25,000. $25,000 for a speech. And he's here with y'all. Like, seriously, give him some love. Now, I am going to try to get him to fan base so he can understand, like, that's how you get paid. So fan base is a, is a platform where you actually get paid for whatever you produce, whatever content you produce. So I am going to try to get him to, to fan base. I'll talk to him about that offline. But y'all, he charges $25,000 for a speech, and he's here with y'all. Um, last week, y'all had Rod. Y'all have no idea how much Rod McKinnis charges for his research. He was here. He gave it to y'all for free. You guys understand that Kenya Young, who is the managing director for everything at NPR, is coming to CEO school. Do y'all understand how big that is? Do you understand that Natasha, Natasha is going to do a class next week on contracts. She's an attorney. You know how much attorneys charge per hour for that information? Natasha's coming. We have a financial planner 
who owns his own uh, insurance company coming to talk to you about how to retire as an entrepreneur, like just the content that you guys are getting. So thank you guys so much. Um, Dr. Will, I so, so appreciate you coming. Um, I hope that you come back. We love you. Um, you're welcome to CEO of school anytime. Appreciate that so much. Thank you once again. And I'm, I'm telling you, you, you guys are, uh, you guys are with the right person. Lanika holds no, Lanika holds no bar. She holds nothing back. She's going to give it to you straight. When she talks about uh, that video from 12 years ago, it was horrible. And as soon as we got finished, she says, Will, you said amazing too much. You need to fix that up. She's using it as a filler. She got on me. And so uh, I, I was looking at that video the other day. I went back to that. But here's, here's the truth, though. To get to video number 1000, you got to do video number one. And video yes. 2000 will always be better than video number one. But you never get to 1000 if you never start with number one. And I was just looking back uh, please don't go uh, search it. It's still on YouTube. Take that down, Lanika. No, but um, that's history, though. Um, go back and go back and look at that video and see. You see the same two people here today. I'm going to do a side by side with that video. Um, it was just two people that was passionate about helping individuals get better. Mm -hmm. That's all we knew. As we talked that day, her company that she's doing now wasn't a part of that conversation. My company that I have, the way it's structured, wasn't a part of that company. You don't know what you're going to evolve to, right? You don't know. 10 years ago, we weren't having this conversation about me having an academy and her having, she, I, she would probably look at me crazy if I said, Lanika, you're going to go into the trash business, right? She probably would have looked at me crazy, but you yeah. never know. But she's been so consistent. She's been so consistent. And you're not going to always know where the road is going to end. But she just knew she just wanted to help people. And whatever that looks like, she knew that's what she wanted to do. I just want to make an impact. And that's the same thing I wanted to do. So when I look at today, where we are today, 12 years ago, guys, it can happen for you. It can happen for you. I know the work that Lanika has put in. And when I look just in a decade of what she's done, what she's going to allow you to do is accelerate that process because she's going to take all the mistakes that she's made. She's going to take all the wins that she's made. She's going to put it in the system so you can accelerate your growth. So for those that you are tapped in, um, I encourage you to tap in, uh, find other people that are serious about really becoming CEOs. There's a lot of fluff out here. I know Lanika is the real deal and you need people in your life that's going to tell you the truth and so Lanika I just want to say I appreciate you you made me a better individual that day because you didn't hold back you told me the truth she's like well you have great content but you keep using fillers I didn't know what a filler was I had to go back and say oh what oh okay amazing because I wasn't thinking through what I wanted to say so thank you so much I appreciate you I do have to run but thank you so much CEO uh, family I look forward to being back with you guys I'll see you later. Okay, bye. Well, thank you so much.